Today class, welcome to government class. Today's topic is military rule in Nigeria. So today we'll be discussing military rule in Nigeria. Looking at the content, the first thing we'll be discussing in military rule in Nigeria is introduction to military rule in Nigeria. We'll be looking at the how military rule started. Just give the preamble. The introduction of military rule in Nigeria. Secondly, we'll be discussing characteristics or features of military rule. What are the things that military rule are made up of? We'll be discussing it today. Thirdly, we'll also be discussing the structures of military rule in Nigeria. We'll be talking about the structures, how military rules are formulated, especially in Nigeria. That's all we'll be looking at. Then, fourthly, we'll be talking about achievements of military rule in Nigeria. What military rule have achieved or what military have achieved in Nigeria. Then, lastly, we'll be discussing the weaknesses or failure of military rules, of military regime. We'll be looking at the failure, we'll be looking at the weaknesses of military rule in Nigeria. So these are the contents we'll be discussing today. Okay. So let us look at the introduction. This introduction we have to we have to look at the history of military rule in Nigeria. On the board, we say that the first Nigerian first military jita began began following the 1966 Nigerian coup d'état, which overthrew. Prime Minister Alaji Sa Abubakar Tafa Abedewa. Major General, Agi, Major General Johnson Agi Rosi was made the head of the Federal Military Government of Nigeria, but was soon overthrown and murdered in coup in June of the same year. July. Of July of the same year. So, in summary of this, this thing is just the introduction. Looking at the military rule in Nigeria, we see that military rule started military rule in Nigeria started in January 1966. And this military rule was this military rule, this military rule was done by a, a major, which was Major uh, Major Cardinal Zog. Major General Cardinal Zog was the one that played a key role in military rule in Nigeria. Though his military and coup d'etat was not successful. And the person that uh, made sure that those, the first coup was not successful was Agi Rose, who was the one that arrested some, some military officers that participated in that first military, military coup. So Agi Rose was Nigerian first military head of state. And we say that in the same year, 1966, in July, Agi Rossi was what? Was also assassinated. He was killed. And the person that replaced him was Gowon, Yakubu Gowon. And Yakubu Gowon ruled Nigeria and was overthrown by his what? His fellow ally, his friend, which was Motar Mohammed. And Motar Mohammed was also um, killed or assassinated by a man called Kone Buka Sukadinka. He assassinated him. And the person that replaced him was his deputy, who was General Rusugu Abasanjo. General Rusugu Abasanjo was the one that um, transferred power to a, a civilian government in 1979. Then, the military rule was said to have stopped in 1979 while civilian rule started but it was um, shortened by the emergence of another military um, general which was our present um, president of Nigeria which was Muhammad Buhari he was the one that removed the civilian government of, um, of them then um, Buhari was also removed by um, IBB, who was Ibrahim Babangida, he removed him. So Ibrahim Babangida also ruled Nigeria and conducted the election in 1963. 
And he also was also the one that canceled the election, saying that the election was not free and fair, when everybody knew that the election was free and fair. So he canceled the election and resigned and gave the government to an interim government. But the interim government did not stay long, which led to an, to the emergence of another military head of state, which was, which was um, General Sani Abacha. So Sani Abacha ruled from 1979 till 19, 19, 1993 to 1998. So Sani Abacha died in office, as you know. And it led to the emergence of um, the military, um, military head of state of Abubakar, Major General Abubakar. So this is how military rule in Nigeria started. So it is a very long history, but we have to stop it here. You will see the assignments we are giving to you for you to explain how military rule in Nigeria emerged. So this is how this introduction to military rule in Nigeria. Okay, let us look at the characteristics of military rule. Characteristics of military rule. The first characteristic is that the military is hierarchical and centralized. Hierarchical, hierarchical and what? Centralized. When you talk about hierarchy in military rule, it means that military rule has hierarchy from the top to the lowest. We have the major generals. We have the sergeant and so on. We have hierarchy. And it's also centralized, meaning that power goes to the center. The highest power is in the center. Then, looking at the second characteristic, you say that it does not tolerate opposition. Military rule does not tolerate opposition. In military rule, they make sure that there is absence of opposition, whether political party or individual. They make sure there is no opposition at all. That is another characteristic. Third, thirdly, you say that the form of government is dictatorial. Dictatorship is also part of feature of military rule. Dictatorial means that they don't obey um, the rights of the citizens. They do things the way they like, without any questioning. So this is also a feature of what? Military rule. Another feature here is suspension of constitution. Yes, once a military rule enters into government, the first thing they do is to suspend the constitution. They put the constitution aside. So it's also part of what? The feature of the um, characteristics of military rule. Then lastly, you say that there is absence of rule of law. Rule of law has to do with equality of human persons. In military government, there is no equality. You see the military generals, they see themselves above the law because they are the ones that make the law. They can change it anytime. So these are the characteristics of military rule. Next, okay, let us look at reasons for military intervention in Nigeria. Reasons for military intervention in Nigeria. Why did military came into governance? Why did they involve themselves in politics? Number one reason is politicization of the military. Yes, one of the reasons is politicization. When you talk about politicization, it means that military, the military personnel are being used in politics, especially during election. During election, you now see military men, armies, leaking, rigging election for politicians. So when you politicize them, they will have the urge of entering into governance. So that is number one reason why they intervene. Number two reason is tribal royalty. Yes, in military, in military, um, in military, especially in Nigerian army, you will see that all the tribes have their own military loyalty. You see an evil man. An evil man will not do anything against his tribe. An Hamsa man will not do anything against his tribe. So they are loyal to, to their ethnic group. So it's part of the reason why military enter. So they want to use the opportunity to promote their ethnic group. That is why the first military coup, coup and, um, happened in Nigeria. Because the Igbos saw it as an opportunity to take over the government, which led to the killing of massive killing of the northerners, that is the Alsas. Okay, the next one, another reason for military intervention in Nigeria is regional based political parties. Yes, during the First Republic, you see that different um, political parties have an alliance with their regions. Yes, in the northern, they have northern people's um, party. In the West, the action group. Why is it this time you see the uh, NCIC? So all the all the political party has a regional alliance. So the, it was part of reasons why military government emerged. Another reason is 
allegation of corruption, nepotism, etc. among politicians. Yes. Another reason why military in, um, intervene in politics is because of corruption. You know, even till today, Nigeria is known as a corrupt nation. Nepotism, tri um, tribalism, and so on. One of the reasons why they intervene is because of corruption. Politicians, we are corrupt. Not even corrupt politicians, even civil servants, we are what? We are also corrupt. So it was part of the reasons why they intervene. They intervene to stop all these things. Then another one, another reason is mismanagement of public funds. Yes, another corrupt practice. Civilians in power, we are mismanaging public funds. Money means for the public. Funds means for the public, we are diverted to political, um, to, uh, to politicians. They divert public funds to their own pocket. So this is this we are the reasons. We have, we have many reasons, but I'll just mention this these five. These particular reasons we are the we are we are one of the reasons why military government, why military government intervene in politics. Okay, let us look at the structure of military rule in Nigeria. Structures of military rule in Nigeria. You know, when you talk about structure, you want to look at the how military government, when, they, when military government is in power, how did they um, put or place their what? Their structures from the top to the lowest. How, which structure did they have? On the board, you have the first structure, which is the highest structure. You see, you see, you see that number one is the head of state or the president. Yes, once a military, um, military personnel enters into gov governance, you call, they call themselves head of state. It's only one, one military officer or head of state that ruled Nigeria called himself president, which was Ibrahim Babangida. He called himself the president. Others called themselves head of state. And it is the highest rank, highest rank in military government when they enter into politics. The second structure is the Supreme Military Council. Yes, we have to, to either you call it the Supreme Ministry. Uh, Supreme Military Council or the Armed Forces ruling the Armed Forces ruling Council AFRC. So this particular structure is made up of is made up of the ministers, the head of state, the governors of different states. That is this council. This council comprises of the head of state. It comprises the ministers. It comprises what? The governors. That is this particular, whether you call it, either you call it the Supreme Military Council, SMC, or you call it the Armed Forces, the Armed Forces Union Council, AFRC. This is the structure of the military rule. The another structure is the National Council of States. Yeah, this one comprises of all the governors of each state. They call it all the military governors of each state. All the military governors, they are part of this National Council of State. Then next, we also have the Council of Ministers. This one is only for ministers. The federal minister, they belong to what? The Council of Ministers. Then, the fourth one, the fifth one, we also have the judiciary. Yes, you know that in any country, you must do, you cannot do without the judiciary. The judiciary are the people that interpret laws and settle disputes. We also have judiciary and military rule. Then lastly, we have the civil service. Civil service, and no country can survive without civil service because they are the people that formulate policies for what? For the military rule, for the military government. They are the ones that formulate those policies. Okay, let us look at the achievement of military rule in Nigeria. Achievement, what did this military government achieve? What did they achieve? Number one achievement, is infrastructural development, infrastructural development like roads, airports, railways. It is if you look at Nigeria as it is, you see that most of infrastructure in Nigeria we are built by military rule, especially during our military. All the infrastructure, the railways, all the railways in Nigeria we are built by military government. The roads, even the um, Niger Bridge. They are built by Gowon, um, the um, regime of Gowon. Almost all the federal roads in Nigeria were built by the, the military regime. So they, they achieved 
infrastructural development. Number two, creation of state and local government. Yes, this one is very important. All the 36 states, the 36 states in Nigeria were created by the military government. No, no, no states were created by civilian government. And again, the local government. The local government in Nigeria were created in 19, a local government reform of 1976. So it was created by the military government. It's also an achievement. Now another achievement is keeping the unity of what? Of the country. Yes, Nigeria fought civil war. It was a war between the Igbos and the world, and the whole of Nigeria. They call it the Biafra and the Nigeria. So, and the government that fought the civil war was the military government, the government of Yakubu Gowon. So it kept the peace, the unity of what? Of Nigeria. It was also an achievement. Then another achievement is introduction of new currency. Yes, Nigeria we are using, was using pounds and shillings. There are pounds and shillings. Thing. Then, the military government of the world also introduced the Naira currency. They introduced new currency. It was also an achievement. Another achievement again was the introduction of new constitution. Yes, all the constitution from 1960 to date, we are product of military government. Military government are the ones producing constitution for us. The 1999 constitution as it is now was produced by what? By the military government. So all these things are the achievements of military rule in Nigeria. Let us look at the weaknesses. Yes, they also have weaknesses. Weaknesses or failures of military regime in Nigeria. Number one weakness is violation of human rights. Yes. When a military government enters into any state or country, they don't obey people's human rights because they are dictatorial in nature. Anything that they want to do, they will do it without considering the rights of the people. So number one um, failure is what? They violate people's human rights. In mean, military rule, they killed many, um, many advocates, like Salome and so on. They killed, they killed most of them. Then next one, number two, mismanagement and wastage of public funds. Mismanagement and wastage of public funds. Yes, military rule wasted our resources, our public funds. As of today, we are hearing of Apache Roots. I think last two weeks, we heard that about how many billions? I think up to 300 billion we are returned to Nigeria from the US. And what will be the reason? Because they are using Nigerian funds to enrich themselves. So it was a weakness. They embezzled our fund. They stole Nigerian public funds. Another weakness is it was undemocratic. It was undemocratic in nature. Military government anywhere in the world is what? Undemocratic. They are not democratic. Undemocratic in the sense that they don't respect human rights of the people. They don't follow due, pro due process. They violate, they don't even use constitution. So these are the weaknesses. Maybe another one is it has no respect for the rule of law. They don't respect the rule of law. There is no equality of human beings in the state. Because the military governors, the military head of state, see themselves as what? As, well, as they are above every other citizen in Nigeria. So there is absence of rule of law. It's a weakness. It's also a weakness. Then, lastly, we also say that laws we are made by decrees. Decrees are proclamation of the head of state. They will just wake up one day and proclaim, and proclaim um, laws that will guide people. Without using, without consulting the people, without using the due process, they will just um, formulate any policy that they like that will suit them. So it's also the weakness or failure of military rule in Nigeria.